Screen Directors Playhouse stars Loretta Young, William Lundigan. Production, Mother is a Freshman. Director, Lloyd Bacon. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. And by the makers of Anison for the fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present, transcribe, the outstanding hit motion picture, Mother is a Freshman, starring Miss Loretta Young and Mr. William Lundigan. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Here is Miss Loretta Young. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening. Since I worked in the motion picture mother as a freshman, I am rather familiar with it, and I'd like to tell you a little something about it. It's a comedy romance, as the title will lead you to believe. It's the story of a mother, that's me, in her first year at college. I sincerely hope you enjoy your stay in the hallowed halls of Pointer College as much as I did. And by the way, do you think you could find a more charming or handsomer professor than Mr. William Lundigan? And now, Jimmy? Thank you, Loretta Young. And now, here's a word from RCA Victor. RCA Victor table model television is the best you can buy, and at the lowest possible cost, too. It's million-proof television with quality proven in millions of homes. Stop in at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and see how little it costs to own the best. You'll find a selection of table model receivers ranging from 19-inch to 17-inch to 14-inch tube sizes. The 19-inch York, for example, is television's top table model. It's a big-screen beauty with unequal performance. The RCA Victor Newport is another, a set that's all picture. And so is the Kent Ensemble. Seventeen big inches of million-proof television. Then there's the Bentley. Yes, RCA Victor's Bentley brings in 14 inches of the clearest, brightest pictures you've ever seen. They're available now. These four great table model television sets that illustrate the perfect combination of quality, value, and economy found only in RCA Victor. Now, the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Mother is a Freshman, starring Loretta Young as Abby Fortitude and William Lundigan as Richard Michaels. My mother. Because she's a widow and the parent of a grown daughter, you needn't think of her in terms of Whistler's mother. Anything but. Actually, she's really very modern, too. Wears clothes like a dream. But there's only one thing wrong with her. She takes the role of mother too seriously. Susan, dear, you're going to have to stop spending money that we haven't got. We're broke. We're flat broke. Yes, I know, Mom. What's in that package? A new dress. A new dress. Yes, but don't worry, Mom. We don't have to pay for it. Oh, no? No, I charged it. Oh, Susan. Can't you understand that when you charge things, there is a day of reckoning. You have to pay for that dress sometime. All right, Mom. So we'll pay for it sometime. Now, look here, Susie. You must return it immediately. Can't. Bought it on sale. Only cost 89 bucks. Uh, dollars, dear, not bucks. Uh, 89. 
And I'm already overdrawn at the bank. Oh, Susie, what am I going to do? What you always do. Call John Heaslip and tell him to put more money in the account. Oh, he always gets so upset when I do that. Oh, lawyers are supposed to get upset. They're supposed to only see the gloomy side of life. <laughs> well, that's our John, all right. <laughs> Dear, what kind of a dress did you buy? An evening gown to wear at the sophomore cotillion. Oh. Especially for Richard. Richard? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. He's the president of the student body, isn't he? Oh, no, Mom. That's Beaumont Jackson. Oh. Well, what happened to Beaumont? He's passé. No savoir faire. No je ne sais quoi. He's a schmo. <laughs> what? Oh, you know. A dope. A drip. Oh, honey, I've told you a hundred times. I don't like you using slang. I'm sorry, Mom. It won't happen again. Now, who is this Richard? Richard Michaels. Professor of English Lit. Oh, that's nice. A professor. A professor? The most gorgeous hunk of dream puss. Dream puss? Oh, dear. I, I don't think it's very nice for a young girl like you to be... Well, uh, Susie, is he, is he one of your beaux? Snatch. Oh, Mom, you're so old-fashioned. Those barriers have been broken down. Oh, have they? Well, of course. Pointer's a modern college... There isn't any more caste system like in the days when you went to college. I didn't go to college. Your father taught me all I know. Now, how old is this professor? Oh, he's... he's sort of ageless. Mm, maybe around 35. Well, now, dear, I'm around 35. Oh, but it's different with you, Mom. Your life's over. <laughs> he hasn't even begun to live yet. Oh, he hasn't. Now, look here, Susie, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. A nice girl like you getting mixed up with one of your professors. It just isn't right. Mother, you're behaving like a perfect schmo. Schmo? Oh, that reminds me. Hmm? I think I'll pay a visit to John Heaslip. <laughs> Abby, you're broke. Dead broke. It's impossible for you to send Susan back to Pointer. But the trust fund that Henry left for me, I couldn't have gone through that even if I'd wanted to. It's still there. Uh, true. Oh, thank heaven, John. Don't frighten me that way. Oh, the, the only thing is, Abby, yes? your trust fund is payable every three years uh, and does not come payable again until February 15th next year. Well, what am I supposed to live on in the meantime? I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, but, John, Susan just must go back to Pointer. Now, where am I going to get the money to pay for her tuition? If you named your daughter after yourself and your mother and your grandmother in the traditional way, that would be no problem. What do you mean? The Abigail Fortitude Scholarship. Oh, now, let's not go through that again. Oh, John, please, you must help me. There must be some other way. Oh, the most beautiful way. What? Marry me. Oh. Oh, no, no, thank you. And let's please not go into that again either, huh? Now, there just must be some other way, John. No. Yes. John, is my maiden name legal? Mm, yes, if you care to use it. Why? Oh, I'll write you a letter about it. And thanks, John. Thanks for everything. So John Heaslip wouldn't loan you the money. Well, we'll just have to go to work. I'll get a job up at Pointer, and you'll have to get a job down here. Maybe at Macy's or in some sweatshop. You're pretty good at taking spots off of things, you know. Well, there'll be no need of our working. Huh? Uh, uh, perhaps you'll understand when I read this pamphlet to you. Endowments to Pointer College. Abigail Fortitude Scholarship. To anyone with the name of Abigail Fortitude who wishes to advance her education and her culture, the sum of 3000 per annum shall be made available. So what? $3,000 is a lot of money, Susie. Yes, but you've got to have a name like Abigail Fortitude hung on you. My maiden name happens to be Abigail Fortitude. Oh, I know, Mom, but you're the last. You told me yourself the reason you named me Susan was so that I wouldn't have that handle around my neck. That's right, so I did. You know, they keep talking about great-grandma Abigail as if she were a philanthropist. But between you and me, I think she was just plain Scotch. You do, huh? Sure. Mm -hmm. She gave her money to Pointer, and then she fixed it so only her own family could use the scholarship. Well, now, in that case, why don't we use it? We can't. I just told you we can't. Why not? You? Yes. Oh, why, it's a sensational <laughs> idea. Yes, I thought so. Oh, my gosh. Oh, golly. Oh, gee. Oh, no, it wouldn't work. Now, why not? 
Well, what would John Heaslip say? Well, I hope he'll have apoplexy. <laughs> well, even so, it's no good. It's not that simple. Why not? Well, there are the college entrance exams, tough ones. Oh, yes. You'd never pass them. Well, now, Susie, it's up to you to see that I do. <laughs> Look here, dear, you don't seem to understand. If I don't go to Pointer, you're not going back either. Now, oh. let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll use my maiden mm-hmm. name, and uh, nobody need know that I'm your mother, see? Uh, and not even Professor Richard Michaels. Huh? Oh, but those entrance exams, they're murder. Oh, come now, dear. They couldn't be that difficult. Oh, no? No. Sit down. Now, prove that two triangles are congruent if the hypotenuse and side of one are equal to ditto. What, dear? Give a concise statement of Dalton's atomic theory. I, uh... <laughs> Describe the structure of a typical diclotinous stem. A what? See what I mean? Oh, Susie. Well, in that case, I, I think we'd better start to work right away. You know, Susie, that doesn't even sound like English to me. <laughs> The principal phyla of the animal kingdom are the protozoa, the porphyria, the Corlantiratata, the or the what? Gesundheit. La semaine passée. La semaine passée. La semaine dernière. La semaine dernière. La semaine prochaine. La semaine prochaine. La semaine prochaine. Il y a ce que j'ai mal de tête. <coughs> Translate. It is that I have a sickness in the head. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> Susie, I'm terrified. Here I am about to take the entrance exams, and I'll never be able to remember all those things. Oh, now, Mama, Mama, listen, don't try. Oh? When you get in the classroom, just relax. Relax. Don't fight it. No. And the stuff will come just seeping through your memory. Well? Mori turi te salutamos. Now, what does that mean? We who are about to die salute you. Oh, yeah. you do, Mom? I don't know. You don't know? For Pete's sake, I've been pacing the floor out here like an expectant father. Well, I handed it in, and he said he'd correct it right away, and I... Susie, I'm oh. going to be sick. Oh, come on, Mom. What do you need? A good, stiff drink. Yeah. Come on. Oh, water. <laughs> oh, Susie. Is that professor in there? He's just a teacher. Oh, but he seems so unfriendly. Oh, they all do. Here, have your drink. Yes, huh? Mr. Fortitude. Miss Fortitude. Mom, that's you. Oh, yes, yes, sir. I'm afraid that wasn't a very good examination paper you turned in, Miss Fortitude. Oh. You barely passed. Is that as good as passing? Oh, you're in, Mom, you're in. Oh, you're in. Congrats. Oh, Mom. Oh, easy, Susie, easy. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, Susan, I'm a wreck. Water, water. Here, here, drink it. Don't say. Drink it. No, just spray it on me, Susie. (laughs) Mother is a freshman. And now, here's a word for discriminating smokers. Science discovered it. You can prove it. No unpleasant aftertaste when you smoke Chesterfields. The biggest plus in cigarette history. Science discovered this fact. Of all cigarettes tested, Chesterfield and only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. You can prove it. Smoke a pack of Chesterfields. They're always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. And Chesterfield is the cigarette that leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That's the biggest plus in cigarette history. Science discovered it. You can prove it. Buy Chesterfields today. Here 
here now is the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Mother is a Freshman, starring Loretta Young and William Lundigan. Pointer College, established 1783 with its ivy-covered halls of tradition. <laughs> Just imagine me at my age, cavorting with callow youths like the campus widow, trying to recapture my springtime. A uh, bobby sock, sir. Well, <laughs> I'll admit I felt like a fish without a bowl to swim in and quite nervous. But here I was unpacking my clothes in a freshman dorm while Susie dashed madly to the office of Professor Richard Michaels, who, incidentally, from a snapshot that I accidentally had seen, reminded me very much of the clean-cut, the all-American boy. You know the type. Well, well, Susan, it's good to see you. Oh, and it's wonderful to see you too, Professor. Did you, uh, did you have a good summer? Sensational. Except I, well, I half expected to hear from you. Well, Susan, I was, I was pretty busy. I didn't get much chance. I to... couldn't wait to get back. I thought September would never come. I, uh, I know just how you feel. I read all the things you told me to read. And, Did you? And I thought of you every time I scanned a single line. Well, now, isn't, isn't that nice? You're going to let me help you again, aren't you? I mean, correcting papers. Oh, well, you bet and... I am. You don't think I could do that myself, do you? I, I'd be lost. You know, I, I ought to put you on the payroll. I'll help you. I know what you mean. It means a lot to me, too. Well, <clears throat> that's, that's fine, Susan. But you're not going to devote all your time to a dusty professor. You, you've got to give the boys a break. Boys. They're so... Oh, so adolescent. Working with you is an intellectual experience. Now, now, Susan, don't tell me you'd rather have an intellectual experience than be belle of the ball at the sophomore cotillion. <laughs> if I were dancing with you... I'd have both. Me? I wouldn't be found dead at a student dance. Oh. Well, I've got to run on, Professor. Goodbye. 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 Parting is such sweet sorrow that I could say goodnight till it be morrow. That's very good, Susan. Very, very good. Mom, Abby. Oh, golly, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> How'd you make out with Gilly? Huh? The dean. Oh. Oh, I think he's the nicest man I ever met. Mm-hmm. And he made me feel just like a little cheat. Why? Oh, he was so pleased that I'd come to Pointer to finish my education. Oh, I see what you mean, but I wouldn't let it bother me. Well, it does bother me, since I know I came here only to put my hands on some money, Susie. I've got news for you. What? If you plan to stay here on that dough until February, you're going to get an education whether you meant to or not. Otherwise, you go right out on your ear. Oh, now, Susie, I've told you time and time again not to use that inane slang. Abby. Yes? I'll have to caution you not to correct people as if you were their mother. Other people might catch on. See? Yes, I see. But the dean already knows. Oh. Oh, well, you needn't worry. He promised to keep it a secret. Well, uh, have you registered for classes yet? Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, no, you don't. School begins today. So right now, head for Dormius Hall and get in line. Oh, well, all right. Uh, hand me my hat, Hey, Jerry, wait you? a minute. Yes? You're not going like that. Well, yes, what's the matter with me? Plenty. You're about as conspicuous as a brass band. Look, this is college, not Fifth Avenue. Well, dear, this is the most inconspicuous thing I own. Well, it may be inconspicuous at home, but it's too overdressed here. You've got to simmer oh. down like one of the kids. Well, what do you think I ought to wear? Well, I'd take those bobby pins and lose them. Yes? Comb your hair out frizzy. It looks too old that way. Oh. And ditch the hat. Uh. And boy, have I got a sweater that'll fit you. <laughs> Angel eyes. Oh. Who, me? Yow, yum, boom. Well, what ails you, sir? Oh, I have lived, Master, and Father wanted me to go to Yale. Uh, going my way? Uh, uh, where is Doremus Hall? That's my way. Well, out of my way, please. Whew. 
stopped. You too? Uh, pardon me, lady. Uh, are you in the right place? This is Pointer College. The store club is south. I'm a student here. I, I want to register. That's me. Oh? What's your name? Uh, Abigail Fortitude. How do you like that? Well, is something wrong? Honey, uh, the name just doesn't go with the scenery. <laughs> You're a freshman? Yes. Ma. Married? Uh, no, no. Where are you living? Uh, has all this anything to do with my registering for classes? No, but a guy has to start planning his past, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. And what's your major going to be? What's the major? In college, you've got to major in one subject, which indicates the type of career you've cut out for yourself. Oh. Well, what does Richard Michaels teach? You too. Now, look here. I only asked, what does he teach? Iniquity. Thinly disguised with Shakespearean sonnets and officially labeled English literature. Oh, well, I'll major in that. And drips like me are interested in trigonometry. <laughs> All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Class will come to order. Uh, you, you there. Why don't you take this seat in the front? Uh, well, uh, Professor, I, uh, I, I didn't want to be conspicuous. You didn't? No. <clears throat> what is your name? Uh, Fortitude. Fortitude. Well, Miss Fortitude, I am not myopic, and I have an uncanny sense of intuition when one of my students is unprepared. Oh. I can spot them in the last row as well as the first, so... Why don't you take that seat next to Miss Sharp? Uh, yes, certainly. Hello, Miss Sharp. Oh, hello, Professor Michael. Back for another try, huh? Don't you think you're in a rut? Oh, I'll pass this time, Professor. If I can keep my mind on my work. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The term has begun. I will now attempt to expose your minds to Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometimes declines by chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Class dismissed. Oh, old Dicky boy sure hasn't lost his touch. Oh, I could listen to that forever. Miss Fortitude? Yes. Can I see you in my office, please? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Professor, but I have another class. I have just dismissed this one 45 minutes early. Oh. This way, please. Yes, sir. Have a seat, Miss Fortitude. Oh, thank you. That's, uh, that's rather an odd name, isn't it? It's a family name. Mm -hmm. Any relation to old Abigail Fortitude, that great pinch penny philanthropist of Pointer? My grandmother. Oh. I'm uh, using her scholarship here. Well, I didn't exactly mean that she wasn't a great uh, philanthropist. No, I'm sure you didn't, Professor. Miss Fortitude, would you mind answering me a simple question? Oh, why, surely, if I can. What the devil are you doing here at Pointer, and why are you measuring in my course? Well, that's two questions, Professor, and the answer is the same for both. To get an education. Are you seriously trying to tell me that there's anything left for you to learn? Now, what do you mean by that, Rabat? No, 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 no. I didn't mean what you thought I meant. It's just that you're a mature woman, and... Very sophisticated. Now, you never saw me before I came into this class, and suddenly you seem to know all about me. Oh, no, no, wait a second. I didn't exactly mean that you're an old crone. It's <laughs> just that I'm used to kids, and, well, you're sort of in my league. Well, I don't think I'm that mature, Professor. No, no, don't <laughs> misunderstand me. It's just that it's a little unusual for... Well, isn't it a little late for you to be getting an education? Uh, no, I don't think so. But if you doubt one's available for me here in your class, I'll be happy to have myself transferred. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I didn't mean that. Professor Michaels, I am not one bit interested in how you came to teach at Pointer. And I don't see why you should be interested in why I came to be taught at Pointer. Now, now. Don't be angry. I was just, just curious, mm -hmm. that's all. Well, curiosity... I know. Kill the, the cat. cat. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Waterjur. Good morning, Professor. <laughs> Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, you will be prepared to discuss King Lear tomorrow. Miss Fortitude? Yes, sir. I see you in my office, please. Yes, Professor. Class dismissed. Hey, Abby, you're beginning to spend more time in there than you do here. Oh, don't be a schmo, Louise. <laughs> oh, well, it happens every spring. But this is October, remember? So long. Yes, Professor? Have a seat, Fortitude. Uh, thank you. Did you, uh, did you get my theme, Professor? Not quite. Well, I handed it in. Yes, yes, I know. I read it, but I didn't get it. Oh. That's why I wanted to see you. Oh. Your ideas are excellent fortitude, but your your rhetoric, well, it leaves a lot to be desired. Oh, dear. Oh, no, no, no. Don't be discouraged. You just need help on your, uh, your academic approach. Oh. Oh, and you're going to help me. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, I see. Not only that, but I'm, I'm going to have to turn the heat on. The heat? Yes, uh-huh. yes. You're, you're too self-conscious, fortitude. You're, you're nervous. Oh? I get the feeling that you resent me, but then, of course, this is only a sublimation of your fear of failure. It is? Mm-hmm. You know, English literature can be fun, and I'm going to show you how much fun. You must learn to relax. Oh, thanks just the same, but I'll manage somehow. You don't want to flunk, do you? Oh, no. No, no, I can't flunk. I- I've got to pass. Well, then you'd better let me work with you. Oh, <laughs> Uh, all right, if you say so. And I think we'd better work nights. Nights? Yes. Here? Oh, no, no. We might as well be comfortable. Suppose you have dinner with me tonight at my house around 7, hmm? Oh, well, uh, no, I'm sorry, Professor. I can't do that. I'm afraid you'd better. No, Professor, I don't think that I ought to take up your time like this. I think but after all... Be... Yes? That's just what I'm here for. Yes, Professor. That's exactly what worries me. <laughs> If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may at one time or another have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. And by the makers of Anison, for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Mother is a Freshman, starring Loretta Young and William Lundigan, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue transcribed with the third act of Mother is a Freshman, starring Loretta Young as Abby Fortitude and William Lundigan as Richard Michaels. Six. 
seven o'clock, and all's well. Abigail Fortitude. Nice name. Lovely name. Beautiful name. That's an odd name. I'll teach her English like she's never been taught. Let's see. Light slow, candlelight, shades down, flowers and vases hither and yon, incense. Ah. Cushions on the couch together. Perfect. Well. Uh, am I uh, late? No, no, Fortitude. Come in, come in. Oh, thank you. You look absolutely beautiful. Oh. I'll take you home. Oh, thank you, Professor. Oh, let's skip that. Professor stuff. Call me Richard. Very well, Richard. <laughs> come in my den. Make yourself comfortable. I'll make some drinks. Oh. How do you like my lair? It uh, smells good. Oh, that's the incense. Oh. You have to burn it to get the traditions out of the woodwork. Incense, yes. Mm-hmm. Would you like a martini? Oh, uh, no. No, thank you. I mix them very dry. Oh, no, thank you. Don't you like martinis? I'm a student here. But you're over 21, aren't you? Oh, yes. Adjust. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're good for you. Have two, then. Make you relax. Lose your inhibitions. You know, you know, Professor, sometimes I think that inhibitions are very good for people, and I, oh, I, I often... Oh, you know what I mean. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, let's sit down and be comfortable, oh, shall fine, we? I'll sit right down there. Ah, the... Ah, the springs are coming out of that one. The this oh. couch will be better next to me. Oh, thank you. You, uh, you don't mind if I call you Abby, do you? Oh, no, if you like. Thank you. Here's your drink. Uh, thank you. To you and to this wonderful evening. Thank you. Oh, I can't tell you how much I've looked forward to this. Oh, really? Something wrong with your cocktail? Oh, no, no, it's fine. Well, well then drink it so I can freshen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, Abby. I, I have to confess that I'm glad you're weak in English, Lit. Oh. Because it, it gives me a chance not only to help you, but... But to know you. Well, now, that, that, that's very nice of you, Professor. I, I want to know you very well. Oh, dear. What's the matter? Oh, I just remembered. I'm awfully sorry, but I just remembered. Remembered what? Oh, it's very thoughtless of me. But I just remembered that I have another date and I can't break it. Another date? Yes, where did you put my But, Abby, you can't. Oh, there it is. I'll get it. For heaven's sakes, you can't just walk out. Well, I said I was sorry. But what about your coaching? Oh, well, some other time, perhaps. But, Abby... And thank you very much, Professor. But you can't just leave. Break the other date. Oh, that would be rude. Rude? Yes. Well, what about me? What about my plans for tonight? I've arranged everything. I know. Oh, Miss Fortitude, how nice to see you. What? Uh, uh, Dean Gillingham? My friends call me Gilly, and sometimes Stinky. Oh. <laughs> and I see we both arrived at the same time. No, she was just leaving. She's got another date. Oh, must you destroy my evening, Miss Fortitude? Uh, well, I... You don't think that I enjoy dining with this dull young man, do you? It was only on his promise that you would join us that I agreed to come. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I thought all the time that you were a... Oh, Richard, I think my headache's better. Headache? Uh -huh. I thought you said hey, you Never mind, a... never mind, Richard. And I'll have that martini now and make it a double one, huh? It's getting late, Dean Gilly. Oh, I don't think so, Richard. But you, you do look tired, you needn't beat me over the head. <laughs> I'm not so senile that I can't take a hint. Would you like me to escort you home, Abigail? Well, No, no, I... no, 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 I'll take care of that. It's, it's on my way home. On your way home? This is where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never thought of that. <laughs> well, well, I'll say good night. Good night, Richard. Good night, Mrs. Abbott. Mrs. Abbott? Uh, Dean, uh, you were asking me earlier in the evening what I thought about my fellow students. And, well, now, this is what I have to say about it. Uh, what have I got to say? <laughs> Good night. Okay. Well, well, I, I guess I'd better be leaving, too. I, I have to be back before 12 at the freshman dorm, you know. But what about the coaching I promised? Richard, I coach better outside. Mm. <laughs> I didn't know you were married, Fortitude. I'm not. 
But the dean called you Mrs. Abbott. Oh, yes, yes, so he did. Quite by accident. We were supposed to keep that a secret. Well, then you are married now. No, I'm a widow, eight years now. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. (laughs) I I, I didn't mean about your being a widow. No, no, I know what you mean. Abbott? Yes? Abbott. Yes. Like it, Susan? Mrs. Abbott? That's right. Impossible. Oh, no, I assure you, it's quite possible. Oh, I can't believe it. Well, so help me, it's true. But you're practically as young as she is. (laughs) Well, hardly. (laughs) And anyway, she'll get younger as she gets older. All right. Now, what's the idea? You're turning out to be a dyed-in-the-wool matter, Harry. Well, it is rather a long story, Richard, and it is a secret. We don't want anyone to know. And I don't want Susan to know that you know. Yet. I have my reasons. (laughs) Okay. Thanks. She's... She's a pretty wonderful kid, Abby. Oh, yeah. You ought to be proud of her. I am. Well, there's the door. Oh. Wait a minute. Hmm? Come here a second. <laughs> you know, I'm liable to get into trouble if I don't get in on time. They'd only dock you from going to the sophomore cotillion. Oh? Which mustn't happen, incidentally, because you're going with me. Am I? Listen, Abby. Yes? I'm, I'm rushing it because that Mrs. Abbott thing scared the daylights out of me. I like you. You know what I mean? I, I really like you. I like you, too. Then... You will come to the dance with me? Well, is it customary? I mean, the student and faculty, oh, you know. Oh, those barriers no longer exist. They don't? No. Oh, where have I heard that before? Well, the barriers are down. They're down. Oh, darling. Mm, Richard. Tradition. Oh. The kissing oak. Oh, it's true. Any girl who doesn't kiss her bow goodnight under this oak winds up an old me. Well, that could hardly happen to me now, could it? <laughs> hardly. Good night, Richard. Good night, darling. Oh, uh, by the way, they teach us in botany that your kissing oak is a willow. Good night. <laughs> Susan, he handed her a book, and and underneath it, he kind of held her hand. Louise, if you don't stop this nasty scuttle, but you and I are going to have trouble. Well, gee whiz, don't get sore at me. I didn't hold his hand. Abby did. Oh, really, Lou? He had on a new tie today. Pretty snappy. If that ain't love and bloom. Well, you saw it yourself. I didn't say it wasn't love and bloom. Only what makes you think it's fortitude? Speak of the devil. Hi, Susan. So long, Susie. So long. Hi, Mom. Oh, so good to see you. Where have you been? Well, I didn't want to get in your hair, Mother. In my hair? Oh, Susie, don't be silly. I mean, with Richard coaching you. I didn't want to make you self-conscious. Oh? In the first place, you needed lots of coaching. Oh, that I did. And in the second place, I... I wanted you to get to know him without me around. What? Oh, come on, Mom. You haven't fooled me a bit. I don't know what you mean, Susie. Come on, let's sit down. All right. You do like Richard, don't you? Yes, I do. Very much? Very much. Good. You're about as transparent as a window glass. I suppose you thought you were pulling the wool over my eyes all the time. Mama, I know you had to come to point it because of the money, but that wasn't the only reason you wanted to be a freshman. I've known since the day I told you about Richard and me. You've known what, dear? You didn't like the idea of me and a professor romancing, remember? Oh, that's right. That's why I wanted you to get to know him. All by yourself. I wanted you to find out how wonderful he is. How real and and thoughtful and sweet. And that's just what's happened. Susie, I... Now you know why I feel the way I do about Richard. It's just the way I wanted it to happen. Now you know why I'm in love with him. In love with him? Oh, yes, Mom. And you've only scratched the surface. Wait until you really get to know him. But Susie, dear... He's not in love with you. Oh, he's very fond of me. It's, it's just that he's he's shy and conservative. Oh, honey, are you sure? I mean, sometimes girls imagine things, you know. And... Well, I, I'm not imagining, Mom. I was never more sure of anything in life. Oh, Mom, am I lucky? Just think he picked me to work shoulder to shoulder with him. Just like the Curies. How important he's been, how... 
how he's changed my outlook on life. Susie, has he said any of these things to you? Or are you just imagining it all because you want it to come true? Oh, no, Mom. Mom, every New Year, girls get crushes on Richard. Mm -hmm. They try to flunk the course so that he has to help them. Oh, I don't mean you. They try to get to correct papers, run errands. They even faint in class. Well, I didn't pull any of those wheezes. It was real. Not some silly schoolgirl swoon. Yes, I see, Susie. Now, Susie, you... you... Oh, I just don't know what to say to you. Well, I'll I... say it. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for liking him. And, uh, Mom, I hate to say this, but... Well, you know how the campus scuttlebutt spreads the alarm. You mean gossip? About you and Richard. Oh, yeah? Naturally, you, you've had to be with him a lot since he's been coaching you, but... Well, now that you've caught up in English lit, I'd be sort of careful about seeing him. Susie, I want to tell you something. I've got to explain oh, something you to you. Oh, you don't have to explain a thing to me, not a thing. You're a swell, Mom. Look, I've got a dash. See you later. Susie. Susie, wait a minute. Su oh. Oh, Susie. Abby. Abby, darling, come in. Oh. Abby, you're shivering, and I, I don't think it's from the cold. Richard, everything's gone wrong. That is a ridiculously broad statement. Now, what do you mean by everything? I mean us. It's Susan. Something's happened to her? Yes. Something incurable, I'm afraid. It seems that everyone at Pointer knows except you. Richard, she's in love with you. Oh, Abby. For a minute, I thought it was something really serious. That's just puppy love. No, no, I don't think so. I did it first when she first told me about you, but I don't think oh, so now. Abby, all those sprouts get crushes. It's, it's like the measles. They get over it. It doesn't mean anything. She's only 17. Oh, darling, I was married when I was 16. But it's not the same, Abby. You're a big girl now, and I'm a big boy. We belong together, don't we? Yes, yes. I want to marry you. You can't expect me to take Susan's order seriously. Oh. Abby, I love you. Oh, I love you too, darling. I do. I want you to be happy and... You want me to be happy, Of too, course right? I do. We've got a right to be happy together, haven't we? Yes, darling. Well, then don't fight it. Just just let yourself go. Go along with it. it it's so simple. Now, you give up this freshman nonsense, huh? <sighs> no, I can't. Not yet. Not until February. Abby, marriage makes me the breadwinner. Remember? Yes. Now, I'll see that Susan stays in college, and, and we'll tell her and get married, huh? We'll tell her, huh? Yes. We'll tell her what, Richard? That her mother's a rival? That you prefer me to her in any way she's just a silly schoolgirl? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being maternal, but... Oh, I think that's pretty hard to take. It isn't just as simple as that. That's not going to solve her problem. You see, to her it isn't a crush. It's real. And being real is the most important thing in her life. Yes, Richard. yes, Abby, that's right. But you're the most important thing in mine. Oh, darling. You've got to give Susan a chance to grow up. You can't treat her like a, a, a swaddling child. She's got to face reality, and you can't protect her from that. Oh, perhaps not. I don't know. I don't know. But I've got to try, Richard. When the government has an important message to get to the people fast, it uses radio. Network radio is the only way to reach everybody in the country in a hurry. The same speed and coverage which make radio vital to our national welfare have made it invaluable to American business, too. When there's a new product to be launched, a new territory to open, a new price to be announced, it can be done the same day on radio. And no other medium of communication talks to so many people at such a low cost. The speed, the economy, and the persuasiveness of network radio. These are the reasons why America's leading advertisers present your favorite programs each week on NBC. And now, back to our story. <laughs> Hello? 
Hello, Mr. Heaslip. This is Susan. Susan Abbott. Oh, for goodness sake, Susan. <laughs> I've got some very good news for Abby. Very good. In fact, I was about to run up there and see her about it. Oh, could you? Yeah. You see, we're having a big dance up here, and, well, we were thinking maybe you could come up and take her to the sophomore cotillion. Why, I'd be delighted, Susan. When is it? Tomorrow night. Well, I'll be there. I'll wire Abby. Oh, no, no, no. Let's keep it a surprise. Oh, and, uh, Mr. Heaslip, nobody knows about us. Abby and me, that is. Well, thank heavens. We'll be done with all that nonsense when I come up. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Heaslip. Uh, Mrs. <laughs> I mean, Miss uh, Abigail Fortitude, please. I'll call her. Won't you have a seat, please? Yes, thank you. Abby, your date's waiting down here. I'll be right down. She'll be right down. Oh, hello, Professor. Good evening. Good evening. Would you tell Miss Fortitude I'm down here, please? Uh, yes. Have a seat, Professor, next to the other gentleman. I'll, I'll tell her. Thank you. Abby, I think you'd better come right down getting a little crowded. Uh, I'm on my way down. She's on her way, gentlemen. Well, might as well talk to each other while you're waiting. Visiting your daughter, sir? Not exactly. I'm down here. John! Rick Michael! Johnny Easton of all people. Well, I'll be... You can knock me over with a feather. How are you? (laughs) Oh, well, I'm fine. Never felt better. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. (laughs) I haven't seen you since we left yet. No, I know. It's been a long time. How long has it been? Twelve. Twelve years. Twelve years. (laughs) Say, did you carry out your silly threat to become a professor? Oh, yes, yes. Right here. What about you? Long? Oh, definitely, yes. I never thought you'd make it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Very odd meeting again in a woman's dormitory. What are you doing here? Pointer. It came up to meet a friend. Why, John. Abby! Uh, hello, Richard. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. You never look more beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what are you doing here, John? Uh, didn't Susan tell you? No. Oh, that's right. I forgot it. Uh, it was a surprise. For me? Yes. Oh. oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea. Do you two know each other? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you two uh, know each other? Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, do you two know each other? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we were pals at Yale. Yeah, classmates. Oh. Isn't that a coincidence? Oh, quite, quite. Well, it's surely been nice seeing you, John. If you're going to stay in town, be sure and drop in and see me. We'll talk over old times. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. Good night. Good night, good night. Shall we go, Abby? Uh, yes, I beg your pardon. Oh, this is my date, Johnny. <laughs> he always was a joker. <laughs> this is uh, my date, Rick. Are you kidding? No, no, you are. Uh, tell him, Abby. Tell him. Uh, go ahead. Tell him, Abby. Well, how can I? Right now, I'm not even talking to myself. <laughs> This is our dance, Abby. Oh, thank you, Richard. Uh, pardon me, Richard. I believe this is my dance. Oh, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. This happens to be my dance. Oh, thank you, Dean. Hello, Susan. Oh, hello, Mr. Heathcliff. Uh, hello, Susan. It's good to see you. I'm so glad you came. There are others who do not share your enthusiasm, my dear. What do you mean? Well, I mean your mother already had a date with Richard Michaels. She couldn't have. What is Johnny Heaslip to do with you? Family lawyer, old faithful. Oh, well, he's not so old. Oh, you know what I mean. Is that why you tried to break our date earlier today? Oh, darling, I didn't even know he was coming. I just didn't want to hurt Susan. Well, what do you want me to do, marry her for Pete's sake? Oh. Besides, she has a date for tonight and a very nice date. I know. Beaumont Jackson. Yes. And he's nuts about her and he's the right age and... Abby. Hmm? Are you in love with Johnny? Why? Are you jealous? You bet I am. Oh. And if that guy tries anything romantic, I... My round, Rick. Oh. oh. <laughs> really, Abby, you ought to be ashamed leading that poor fellow on. Oh? Well, no, he's just mooning for you in, in public. Oh, do you think so, yes. too? Yes. Now, Abby, look, you can't put aside your life and pretend to be a college girl. It's... It's like living in a dream world. Well, sometimes dreams come true. Well, more often they don't. 
Well, anyway, the farce is over. I uh, I have money for you. Oh, now, look, I've told you before, John. No, 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 it's, it's your money. We, we sold your stock at a decent figure. You have... 5,000 to your credit. Cutting in, Mr. Heasley. Oh, go away, you frightful juvenile. Oh, it's all right. Abby, I just wanted to warn you. About what? Susan Abbott's been blowing her top ever since you and the professor arrived with that other creep. Oh. She's pretty sore at you. Oh, thanks, Pearl. Where, where is Susan? Right over there by the soft drink. Because you don't mind dance me to her, will you? Yes. Uh, come on outside. There's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, Mother, how could you? Mother? Is she nuts? <laughs> hey, Abby, did you hear her? She called you her mother. Yes, Bo. That's right. You? Holy smoke. Here, yeah, pardon me. What's wrong, Abby? Oh. I'm going back to New York, Richard. New York? Yes. Or I can't hurt my child anymore. Abby. Oh, Richard, I... <laughs> you know, I really have got a headache this time. <laughs> Let's leave her. Hello, Susan. I've been waiting for you. Professor Michael. How's my mother? I guess all right. She'll be along in a moment. Too bad she's leaving. Yes, isn't it? Waiting to say goodbye? No. We're not talking. That's very interesting. Susan, don't you realize what you're doing? I believe I do. Susan, your mother is giving up a life of happiness with me. She's been a woman here. She's been alive. And it's up to you to help me keep her alive. No, she... She's going back. Susan, help me. You love her? I love her even more. All her life, you've been her life, and that's, that's finished now. You're grown up. Help me, Susan. No. Why should I? It's not helping you, Susan? it's helping her. I'm all grown up, and I'm in love with you, too. Oh, Susie, I don't even think you even know the meaning of the word. I love you. Why should I give you up? Your mother loves me, too, and she's giving me up. You see, that's the difference between a woman and a child. But I'm not a child. But here's your chance to prove it, then. Here comes your mother. I'm leaving. It might be your last chance. Hi, Susie. Hi, Mom. Well, sweetie, take care of yourself, huh? <laughs> oh, Susie, here, here, don't cry. Oh, it's all right. Susie. But, Ma, I was wrong. Don't leave us. Oh, Susie. Don't go away. Oh, darling, are you sure? Yes. Susie, do you mean it? Do you mean it really? Yes. Oh. If I can't have him, Mom. At least let's keep him in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miss Abbott. Oh, uh, Hey, Sue, for Pete's sake, Angel Eyes, I can't wait all night. Coming, Bo. See you later, Mom. That's right, Punky. And so long, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Abby, I guess she grew up tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> Richard! My, my bags, they're on that train. Don't worry, my bags are on there, too. Oh, pretty confident, weren't you? Well, why not? Everything was all set. Come again? I spent three hours teaching Bo Jackson my technique. It never misses. <laughs> How fast. Well, where are we going? Where do you think? Oh, Richard, you haven't even proposed. Oh, that'll come later. Uh -huh. First, when you're my wife, yes? there's an item on the agenda upon which I must insist. Yes? Under no circumstances will you wear sweaters. Oh. <laughs> That's a deal, and Richard. Yes, dear? When we're married... There's an item on which I must insist. Anything, anything. You're through teaching English lit to pretty girls. From now on, you're spouting Latin to dull boys. Oh, darling. Thank 
you, Loretta Young and William Lundigan, for a charming performance. Our stars will return in just a moment. Every week, NBC and its affiliated stations bring you a world of entertainment. But there is more to network radio than that. Radio is a more efficient and less expensive way to advertise. The increased sales resulting from the advertising mean more production of goods and lower prices for you. In addition, the keen competition inherent in advertising shows up every day in new products, in better products for your use. Every program broadcast by NBC and its affiliated stations, whether it contains an advertising message or not, is paid for by the revenue gained from advertisers. So when shopping, remember the brand names you've heard on NBC. Those manufacturers believe in their products enough to urge the greatest possible number of people to test them in their homes. Only quality products can survive this test. Only quality products can continue to advertise. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse has a new time. It will be heard on Friday night. That's Friday night, one week from tomorrow. Consult your local newspaper for the time in your community. Our adaptation will be Broken Arrow, starring James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget, together for the first time on the air in their original roles. And now here again are tonight's stars, Loretta Young and William Lundigan. Thank you. You know, in our profession, we meet many people, some with little talent and some with great talent. Well, I'd like to say of Lloyd Bacon, who directed Mother as a Freshman, he is a champion, always was and always will be, and a finer man and a better friend you can't find. May I interrupt, Loretta? Of course, Bill. You're right. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the very distinguished director, Mr. Lloyd Bacon. Thanks, Loretta and Bill. The usual custom just about now is to tell you both how great your performance were tonight. Well, I'm not going to do it. Oh, why not? Everybody already knows it. <laughs> I refuse to be a repeater. <laughs> oh, you know something? A very interesting thought just struck me. Loretta Young could be a great boon to education. What? Just enroll her in any school and you'll have the largest student body in America. <laughs> <laughs> Loretta and Bill for the screen director's playhouse, I hope. Come back again soon. Thank you, Lloyd, and good night. Thank you, and good night, everyone. Mother is a Freshman was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Producers of the Daryl F. Zanuck Technicolor production, David and Bathsheba. Starring Gregory Peck and Susan Hayward. Loretta Young may currently be seen starring in the 20th Century Fox production, Half Angel. William Lundigan also appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Producers of People Will Talk. Starring Cary Grant and Gene Crane, soon to be released. Included in tonight's cast were Doris Singleton, Joy Terry, Sam Edwards, Jim Backus, and Ralph Moody. Mother is a Freshman was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Screen Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Friday night, one week from tomorrow. Consult your local newspaper for the time in your community when the Screen Director's Playhouse presents Broken Arrow, starring Jimmy Stewart, Jeff Chandler and Deborah Paget. Listen again next week to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Monday through Friday, it's Right to Happiness on NBC.